Nations, no borders, no nations. It's worth noting that the last two-year process has also been incredibly stressful for all of their loved ones and they have provided a huge amount of support for those people. So give a massive round of applause for them as well. I'd like to welcome to the stage one of those incredible people. This is Eddie's mom, Margot. She's absolutely fantastic. Please give her a huge round of applause. Thanks very much. Can you hear me okay on this? Yeah? Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to share with you some of the feelings, not the stressful feelings, but the other feelings that the families and supporters have for the defendants. The feelings are outrage and love. Outrage at the verdict and love for our children. The, the amount of outrage we feel allows you to measure the depth of our love. And I go into that in detail because I think everybody here is powered by the same feelings today. Outrage and love, that's why you're here and that's what's going to get us through this. I also think that you're here because you are motivated by the same feelings that the Stansted 15 had. You can't possibly know them all individually. I suspect a lot of you are here out of the same feelings that you want to help. You want to help people that you, that you know need your help. You know they're in trouble and you've come all this way. You identify them and identify with them because you know they're threatened with harm. That was what motivated the Sandstead 15 and I know that's what's in your hearts today. The verdict has criminalized protest for us all, but it's actually them that are going to be faced with a prison sentence if that's what goes through. They put their well-being and their freedom at risk for a group of strangers who they knew were in great danger. One of the testimonies that Lindsay mentioned also has a sentence in it just the simple sentence, please rescue me, which is one of the most heart-rending things that anybody can ever say to another human being. It's one of the sentences that I feel is at the heart of all the people we see around us in London today who are homeless, who are begging, who are stuck in the street. The hostile environment extends to so many of us now. What we feel also, therefore, is not just love and pride about the Stansted 15, we feel great gratitude. Gratitude not just that they saved those lives, but gratitude that they offered us another way of being, another way of being human in this appalling situation where we're meant to look at immigrants as a threat, where we're meant to build walls or let people be drowned at sea. What they offered us was a way of understanding it's inequality, not immigration, that causes the problems. It's not immigration. Yes. But even more importantly than that, they offered us a way of greeting strangers with open hearts, with open arms that says, you're actually welcome here and instead of building prisons and fortresses we're going to turn our communities into beacons of hope and hospitality they've offered us that possibility <laughs> that's what i'm most grateful for and that's what i'd like us to base the future campaign on i'm just going to say two last things about families i mentioned it before Families never go away. Look at the Hillsborough campaign. No matter how long, no matter how many years, justice was fought for by mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters. And I, I think that pretty much covers us all here today. I think everybody's part of a family. Comrades can cover it all. I don't mind either way. The last thing I want to say is that when um, 
Uh, Edward was born, he's one of the defendants. His godfather sent me a card that had on it one of the, uh, the slogans from the Nicaraguan Revolution, which is, Los niños son la esperanza del mundo. Okay, children are the hope of the world, and it certainly turned out to be the case. Thank you to all the children from all the parents. Thanks so much.